So, okay, talk to me about the dinosaur. I mean, this is just part of the story. The story actually goes around this way. So we're gonna talk a little about dinosaurs that are found on petroglyphs. And right here, there's a picture, it looks like a T-Rex eating a man. We're gonna be taking a journey in this film with some men that have gone off the beaten path in very unusual areas out there in New Mexico and have found these these strange petroglyphs that look like dinosaurs, including the T-Rex. Is that petroglyph back there and the one on the screen look similar to the dinosaur that I'm showing you in my hand? You see that? These are uh, <clears throat> Hedrosaur Oh my goodness, look at these. Look at these. That's clearly a dinosaur. These are the duck-billed dinosaurs. Let me just go uh, a step further. Let me just ask you this. Does this right here on the screen, this creature right here drawn on this rock, does that look like, if I hold this up right here, does that look like a raptor type of creature to you that they were drawing on these petroglyphs behind me? Does it look like a raptor to you? And the tombs are actually all right here. You see the deer right up here? The deer, there's the deer. Yeah. Do you want to point at the deer and talk about it? Well, this would be, you know, maybe a deer or uh, some sort of mule or something, but probably more a deer. Four-legged animal. Mm-hmm. Petroglyphs are, are made by, they're not just drawn on with chalk or something like that. They're done by chiseling into the rock. I think you're going to find it quite fascinating where these petroglyphs come from. Here on the screen is the deer he's pointing out on the screen behind me. The ones we're looking at there come just outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. We'll get there. But after looking at those petroglyphs, we, we travel down to, down to Albuquerque where they have Petroglyph National Monument in Albuquerque, New Mexico, or just outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here's an actual petroglyph right here of a, of a bird thought to be a macaw, which should be noted that the people that were drawing these petroglyphs were they're drawing what they actually saw. In fact, many of the, the writings or the scribblings or the, it's ancient graffiti is what it is. Like this is an example of a petroglyph here at uh, uh, Petroglyph National Monument in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So right here, you can see a, a circular uh, drawing on a, on a rock. And so the reason you can see the petroglyph is because it's, it's, it's literally chiseled in. And so over time you can, that's why it's not fading off. It's not like just chalk drawn on. It's literally chiseled into the, the rock. My wife tends to believe that while the men were out hunting that it could have in many instances been children, like children do today, spending the day kind of scribbling on the, on the rocks with other stones and drawing characters that they physically saw. You'll also find a lot of petroglyphs that have characters on them that look like otherworldly or spiritual characters. Some even suggest that they are actually drawing aliens, but otherworldly, other dimensional type characters. But I wanted to point out to you what we've got in the imagery here. So I want you to notice that the women are separated from the, from the men as you're doing Islam. And also we've got the, the men li lined up here with all of the, all the feathers coming out of the head. They're holding hands in the symmetry as if we're in a ritual formation. And then here in the heart of it, I want you to notice the imagery here with the, the head. I'll just let you interpret whatever it is. We've got three circles here, but we've got the head and we've got two horns coming out. That's what that is right there if you want to zoom in on it. And then of course you've got the, the moon. Here's some more of these petroglyph symbols. This looks like some type of, maybe a lizard uh, of some type. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but here's the head, the tail, and the four little legs. I want to draw your attention to this symbol over here. So, you see these crescent symbols. So it's got a kind of a, a pole and almost squiggles going up it. 
and then on the top of it you get this you get this crescent shape right here this crescent shape with a circle there looks like a crescent with a you know see it on my hand a crescent with a star or a disc or a circle or whatever it may be on the inside oh here we have a circle and a circle i don't know what was originally there and uh down here we've got another little man petroglyph on these rocks in this alcove and there's the uh the guys over there climbing out and we basically hiked quite quite some distance into a into a canyon to make it to where these tombs are or these believed tombs are in these rocks and the, the dinosaur one was just right down here in fact let me crawl right then of course you've got the the moon here like you would have for the moon goddess and here we have a, a star symbolism like you'd have a crescent and you'd have the the crescent moon with a star on the inside of it. This is this is imagery that goes not, not back to Islam and truth, but it goes all the way back to ancient Babylon. That's where that symbolism would come from. And then following Babylon, well, uh, Babylon would be Sumer and Akkad and the imagery you'd have at the time of the Tower of Babel. And then later it would get amalgamated into the Egyptians and then later the Babylonians. But here's the symbolism here, the moon and the star and whatever coordination that you want and on this side sort of a uh, dark looking character with with horns their men are separated out and circling it the teepees are all up here on this side and you get the women back here for the men to do their their ceremony i would like to point out on the other end of it the other end of the spectrum this behind me is called the the back creek stone this was discovered or alleged to have been discovered in Back Creek, which would be outside of, well, it's housed outside or in Knoxville, in Knoxville, Tennessee. The artifact, it's claimed by some to be authentic, it's claimed by others to be a hoax. It is interesting to me that when something veers towards paganism or the occult, it's automatically real. If something would veer towards biblical, like this stone on the screen behind me, it's immediately by the, at least by the university crowd, to be defined as a hoax. Now, what cannot be defined as a hoax are what are known as fairy stones. These are a, a natural, they're a natural formation and they make the, they make the shape of, of crosses. I believe that there was a high blessing put on this land even before Westerners came or Spanish came. I believe there's a high blessing that was on many of those tribes of those American Indians or all of the tribes. The fairy stones, when the Spanish came, when the Christians came, when the Catholics came, Cherokee Indians and others, but specifically the Cherokee, were very quick, many of them, to, to turn to Christianity. And that is often credited to these, what are known as fairy stones. So there's a legend in the Carolinas and the Indians that were in those areas, specifically amongst the Cherokee, that these stones, they're called fairy stones because the fairies or these beings of light were crying and made these stones in the shape of crosses. This is a true legend. And a legend that many people have no idea exists that they believe, the Indians believe, that the fairies or these beings of light were crying these stones in the shape of crosses because the son of the great spirit or the great creator had just died and therefore the beings of light or the fairies were, were crying stones in the shape of crosses. So when they saw people coming who were wearing necklaces with crosses, they quite quickly came to believe that the, the legends they had known and heard of the fairies crying crosses and these new people that had arrived were one and the same. Again, I can't emphasize enough that I believe there's been great blessing and great a great hand on this land that we call the United States. And uh, we might have to go through this fence. Okay. Oh, right there. Um, and Jesse James and the KGC were, they had all the old maps of the world, of America. 
We'll crawl through that because we're going to have to crawl through a fence and go up some stuff. He's not going to be able to go up very easily. Okay. Indian practices are well known for going into the, taking the pharmacia or the, or the peyote, going into the spirit realm and depicting things that they, that they saw or going into visions and perhaps drawing those things from those realms. When I told the people at Dinosaur National Monument, the park guides that were there, where this, this image here comes from, the macaw drawn back here, that if you go off of the beaten trail out there by Santa Fe, that not on the tourist maps, but in areas well behind those, you're gonna find wells more of these petroglyphs, drawings of animals and people and spiritual encounters. But amongst those, you are gonna find images that looked very much like like dinosaurs on this petroglyph here that looked like people were literally drawing dinosaurs on the rocks and they of course they told me that this wasn't possible there can't be such a thing and i said well but indeed there there is and in fact your own scientists have come or experts have come and looked at these and they're quite simply real and there's an actual story by the way and they told me well that, that can't be that can't be the case and i said well, well why can't that be the case that they were drawing dinosaurs with people and they said and the guy responded back to me and he said well because we we all know that dinosaurs did not live with people and i said ah we're in new mexico so the top people at the university of new mexico this is what i told him have determined that what actually happened here was that aliens came 65 million years ago and they drew dinosaur looking characters on the rocks which have lasted to this day in other words i told him that maybe the the aliens were traveling back and forth in time and drawing dinosaurs scribbling dinosaurs on rocks just to just to trick us then the aliens traveled through time and were sitting up there when the scientists looked up and they saw aliens laughing in the spaceship because they had tried to fool us all by drawing dinosaurs on rocks. Now here's the funny part, is that the people at the, the National Park exhibit took that far more seriously than simply suggesting that the people at that time were drawing what they saw that looked like big lizards on rocks. This standing right here is the, this is the infamous Camel Rock between Taos, New Mexico and Santa Fe, New Mexico. And a lot of pueblos in these areas. And we're gonna be looking at some petroglyphs all over New Mexico today. Here's a toy T-Rex that I got up there by one of the dinosaur museums. He's a wind-up toy T-Rex. Let's see how he looks. When I wind him up, and I put him up next to this petroglyph right here. Do they look kind of look kind of similar to you? You think that looks like you over there? Santa Fe, New Mexico is over here. It's just a little a little ways from Taos, New Mexico. The, the famous the famous art district of Taos, New Mexico is Santa Fe. And then back in here you have all sorts of dinosaur, you have all sorts of dinosaur bones found, all sorts of Indian petroglyphs also found. Well, okay, so right over here, so I, I noticed this. So what is this we're looking at? So it says a mine shaft at some kind of a So this was the old coal mines. Okay. And um, it's now a restaurant and bar and a mining museum. But this you wanna is walk a, in it? Yeah, yeah we can, yeah. Go in there and see it. To get to these particular petroglyphs that look like dinosaurs, we met Joshua James just just outside or just askew from one of the Pueblos in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, this is right down the road you were stating from the uh, where they filmed the Cowboys and Aliens. So the, uh, right, they, there's the Bonanza Creek Ranch, which is um, is a film studio, so like Astronaut Farmer, Into the West, The Missing, we filmed so many movies there. But that's where Alec Baldwin murdered 
the girl that was... What he was going in to state there is that the filming ranch, the Bonanza filming ranch where Alec Baldwin, where that accidental shooting or whatever it was occurred on the Rust set, there's a lot of speculation on that that he was about to go into. I just simply lay that in the viewer's hands. It is fascinating that these petroglyphs are surrounding the area where that set was. Hmm. Yeah. But the, but the, the ranch where they, she got shot, no matter what the reasons were, yeah, is here. Um, the accidental shooting. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. So this um, is a really cool town. And of course, speaking of aliens, demons, and later in this, outlaws, as well as thrown into the mix there, cowboys and dinosaurs. Is that very same Bonanza Ranch where cowboys and aliens or portions thereof was also filmed. So this is Madrid. A lot of people say Madrid, but it's actually Madrid. They call okay. themselves Madroids. Okay. And Madrid is uh, is a coal mining town. Okay. There's also a lot of gold miners out here. Okay. This is where Tesla and Edison had their big fight. Tesla used to use uh, the Ortiz Mountains, which are right over here. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a big gold mine there. They drive right. semis right into the mountain. Right. And this is where, when Walt Disney was flying over during Christmas time, flying over Madrid, he mm -hmm. saw all the Christmas lights and got his idea for Disneyland. Really? Yeah. Uh, because the town was so cute. Well, they, they, had, they were the only place in the world that had Christmas lights. He brought up Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison there. I've got behind me now, I've got a little Nikola Tesla bobblehead. I have a feeling that he will play a role in some of, some of these next films that we have coming out in our journey through the Old West and places thereof. Here's my Nikola Tesla. Now it's commonly stated that Edison and my light bulb back here was actually stolen or the ideas were stolen from Tesla here in this bobblehead holding a holding a light bulb that may have been stolen by Edison. Whatever the case, this mining town that we're looking at near our our movie western sites and also our dinosaur petroglyphs is not very far this is santa fe right here it's just literally a stone's throw figuratively speaking from well from right this guy you might recognize right here this little oppenheimer bobblehead los alamos new mexico we knew the world would not be the same Oppenheimer was the first director of Los Alamos Laboratories and I think the second director was I think the second director was Bradbury during the time where, where my dad worked there at Los Alamos Labs. Does that sound right to you? It's a bobblehead. We'll probably talk about that in the next video. We had a chance to go through Los Alamos and look at some of these different things as well. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Los Alamos is literally just a stone's throw from where we're standing. In Madrid, as the, as the story goes, here's my little Tesla with his light bulb in my, my hand again. In Madrid, as the story goes, they had, they had electric light bulbs. And it said that Walt Disney, as he was flying his plane over, he looked down and he saw all the electric lights in the, in the town of, of Madrid. And this was the inspiration for what we today call Disneyland, the light bulb. More specifically, they had, they had Christmas lights. 
So, so you got the mine shaft tavern over here, okay. and the mine shaft deck over here. Wow, two this different looks, bars. This this looks really. This is something. It's all cowboy. So, uh, this way to the okay cantina, mine shaft's deck, the Madrid Coal Town Museum, and engine house for the theater. Uh, you want to walk down there? You think they're open? Yeah, you want to check this one okay. out? This is yeah. the original. Oh, this is the original. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one's a little newer. This is the pathway in to what used to be the, the mining the mining area where the mines were and also the, the tavern, the, the old tavern in town. And the place also where when they're filming movies, the celebrities might might go and visit. Even celebrities that were outlaws in the Old West. If you ever watch the Young Guns movies, they filmed all those out all around this area. Tell me about that. So, so we were just in a town where you had the um, uh, Billy the Kid hung out in one of the saloons. Right, that was the, the town of Cerrillos. Okay. And Cerrillos was a mining town as well. Right. There's been a, a lot, there's a lot of Spanish mines out here. One of our last jobs in 2008, uh, we got the largest collection of Spanish mining tools in the world from, uh, from a site out there uh, near Cerritos. If you think about it logically, Billy the Kid and Jesse James and these characters, they kind of fit with the area because they're so, even though they're outlaws, they're celebrity outlaws. These are, you know, they're the most uh, famous. In fact, they might be more famous than the celebrities of the day. Sure. Billy the Kid. sure. This lady here turned out to be quite interesting that I'm doing a, an interview with who works in the, works there in the tavern. And, um, in those areas, you have a lot of you have a lot of celebrity outlaws that frequented those areas, including including the famous, very famous Billy the Kid. This is New Mexico. Well, I moved here in '74, so wow. obviously I think it's fine. What's the most famous thing about the town? Well, one of the while it was mining was that all the coal went up to Los Alamos. For, from the 30s, late 30s, on to when the war was over. What did they do with it? Well, they heated, heated, the heated things whatever too. they needed to do with coal. Up in Los Alamos, yeah. came from out here. Yeah. Yeah. It would go did, up and go take the train here to uh, Waldo, and then go up to Los Alamos, and then do push-pull trucks on up to Los Alamos. Wow, wow. Yeah. What she's telling you and explaining there is that the lighting, the heating, and the energy are some large portion thereof for the labs in Los Alamos that would be the start of the nuclear age came from that little town of Madrid. This behind me on the screen is called the, the fat man or the fat boy. I find this very relevant because you're in an hour of history where people toss around the word nuclear bomb quite a lot. And that will probably be more and more on the coming horizon, I fear. So tell me, tell me about your, your time there at uh, Los Alamos. Well, it's uh, probably the best summer of my life. Uh, but uh, yeah, the... Uh, I went there because uh, it was uh, touted to have uh, uh, the largest computer complex on the uh, planet Earth. Inside of this big yellow device on the screen behind me is what they called the gadget, which is this round thing right here on the screen behind me. So this thing, okay, the gadget that, here. The gadget, that's, the scientists didn't refer to anything in Los Alamos as a bomb. They were called gadgets. Okay. But that's a plutonium bomb. Okay. It's an implosion bomb. Mm -hmm. The way they set off the plutonium mm -hmm. is they have shaped charges inside that globe mm -hmm. that, are, that are detonated simultaneously to compress the plutonium to the center to a critical mass mm -hmm. to make it explode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This man here who gave us some explanations about these weapons that were developed a long time ago and are popping up in your news more often now than they should. 
This man behind me, he was incredibly, he's a veteran. We need to treat our veterans a lot better than we do. He's a naval veteran explaining to us about these, these gadgets. So this gadget here is what's inside of this thing here. That's right. That's right. The little boy bomb, which was dropped on Hiroshima, is a, is a, is a uranium bomb. Okay. And uh, it, uh, it's an interesting, it's a very simple system. They didn't test it because it was one, so simple, and two, they were about out of uranium-235 when that bomb was dropped. But they knew it would work, they were pretty certain. But they weren't so certain about the, the uh, gadget. That's why they, they didn't want to risk dropping a dud on Japan. They wanted to know it would work. And it was kind of iffy. But devices like this fat man here on the screen behind me were, well, some portion of the energy that provided the lighting for creating them are from, well, this little town behind me where the uppity ups of the day and the outlaws and maybe even folks like, who knows, John Travolta from time to time have hung out. So is this one of the areas where they, where they come and hang out and they're filming movies up here? Yeah. Sometimes they yeah. do? Yeah. They do? In, in this area? Who have you met in here? Can you say? Anyone? I guess John Travolta's The Wild Hogs movie was one of the buildings down here. Yeah, it's down the street. It's all yeah. filled with stuff from China. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the Harley people are like veterans, most of most of them. And here, everything in there is made in China. It's like, I just feel so bad for them that that's what they have to, where they, what they have to get. Well, yeah, it seems that way, doesn't the, um, uh, even the movies will kind of appease China these days, sort of. But, um, well, okay, well, thank you for telling yeah. us about that. The town and the tavern. And we had some pretty heavy outlaws back in the day. Which ones? Which oh, we had like some of the pagans and just people really hiding out. I mean, one guy got scalped. He like screwed with the wrong person. What do you mean the pe you said pagans? Was yeah, which is one of the bike gangs. Oh, oh, but this is the like heavier than them, maybe Hell's Angels or what? We uh, or close. on the same, yeah. Yeah, same, yeah. Okay, all right. So we had a lot of people that were hiding out. I mean, you would take somebody's picture and you'd be lucky if you didn't get your camera back in those days because nobody had a cell phone, well, you know, to put on the ground. Well, I hope we make it out today. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be now, fine. Now, there's a lot of yuppies. I, I wasn't sure if that was a threat now. or if that was a... No, but that there's was, a, lot of, I, a lot of yuppies live here now. Right. But, now, as we leave the old mining town and areas of Madrid, where the celebrity outlaws may have frequented, and the science gurus of the more modern age, we're gonna make our way out to, out to the sites where these petroglyphs are. So we were talking about Jesse James and being in your family lineage. The KGC, um, they had all the old maps of America, okay. the old Spanish maps and older, and they were relocating all these ancient sites, their depositories of the gold right and we've all probably heard you know that the original plan of texas was to take mexico and form a new country with all the the treasures kgc is a scene right here kgc this stands for knights of the golden circle this was a a group that it's alleged that jesse james periodically or perhaps frequently trafficked with as legend goes they may have had mutual interests from time to time and those interests would include at least well this word right here the the gold and uh, so that's what the KGC were doing they created the USGS because they were remapping and remarking everything yeah they created the railroads and they robbed the railroads you know, we hear the stories of how they just robbed all the trains and the banks, but they were in reality, from a different perspective, they're fighting the same war we're fighting today. They mm -hmm. were fighting the bankers and the, the crown infiltration. 
of this country. Jesse James, seen pictured right here, is another celebrity outlaw of those old western times. Joshua James, who's, who's taking us out there to these sites, believes that his, his lineage and heritage goes back, Joshua James, to the Jesse James family. Pictured here on the back screen, and I found this a little interesting, lived in, uh, well this is the James family ranch in Missouri, Missouri. Jesse James is, well, according to Joshua James, is less of an outlaw, but is credited even in this modern age, just like Billy the Kid, as being a, a folk hero, a, a Robin Hood of their hour. That their fights were, in Jesse James's case, against the sort of the elite banksters of his time, is what's being argued. The stories just all tell us that they were just evil outlaws right so they, they were really protecting the originality of this country and our constitution mm. but uh yeah my family has a museum the house my grandfather grew up in and his father and his father and his father in mesquite texas and the james gang used to come stay at, at the family ranch really your family's ranch uh -huh. and my grandmother's side of the family actually married into the James family. My grandfather was actually blood related. So we're heading now to some petroglyphs. And this is Tim behind me. Hey, Hi, Tim. And we're, we're making it. Uh, they're, all over. they're all through this canyon. Oh, I see petroglyphs right there. Yeah. So the petroglyphs are located really in what amounts to a, a canyon that we had to hike quite a ways into. I would note that petroglyphs that look like these ones here, petroglyphs are commonly little stick figures. This is clearly a man with a bow and arrow. He's getting a, a deer over here, some kind of a, uh, looks like a deer to me. Petroglyphs are the ones that are on the, the tourist guides and the tourist, uh, tourist maps are certainly not the ones that look like these where there are wealths of them all over the place in that cove. I would very much like to point out again that when when they were trying to draw a, a bird you can clearly see that that's that's a bird on the back there on the screen behind me. However the ones that were obviously taking the most interest in are ones that look like this right here on the screen behind me and there are a few of these that are out there drawn along with all of the other characters. Once again, I'm going to hold up to the screen this, this right here, this raptor image with the image here of what looks like a, what looks like a, a raptor. You can clearly see the ears. And this definitely looks like a, like a dinosaur right there. I mean, that's, that's, that looks like a dinosaur. And they said they, they had the nerve to call that a bird. Oh yeah, that's what they call them. You know, they, they want us to believe that, of course, there's a lot of fake dinosaurs these days, right? China makes a lot of money selling these, these figures that they make yeah. to, to museums. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll find like one little piece of a finger yeah. and they can recreate the whole dinosaur, you yeah. know. But there's only a limited amount that they actually find in the ground. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, Eastern New Mexico, Tucumcari is like the number one paleontology school in the U.S. Really? could dig up dinosaur bones all day really and uh, lots of stuff have been found there I mean farmers ranchers are finding uh, mastodons and uh, all kinds of different dinosaurs all the time mm -hmm. they've got a museum out there um, Kreider actually has dinosaur bones that still have meat on them they right. still have blood like flesh on them amazing. oh yeah so they definitely existed with man. Man did husbandry with dinosaurs. Man rode dinosaurs. Uh, the, the Romans and different South American cultures, I mean, they depict it a lot. What about pterodactyls? Those are a dinosaur-like flying creature, flying dragonish, lizard-type reptile creature, aren't they? See it? Okay, guys. Okay. So, you have a Thunderbird there. Okay, talk to me about this. Well, we were 
talking about the, the Thunderbird earlier. Yeah. Uh, which would be like a pterodactyl-like flying dinosaur. Well, Indians are pretty famous for talking about the, the Thunderbird. What do you think they meant when they were referring to these, these creatures that they depict all over the place called the Thunderbird? Coming down. Uh, next to it you have what kind of looks like a swastika. Of course, the Native American... Swastika looking thing the here. The American version is usually in reverse. It's mirrored, right? Same right. It's a counterfeit. And it actually means peace. But that is only like half a swastika. The other lines are straight. Speaking of the Thunderbird, Thunder and of course petroglyphs, well, Hitler wasn't the first one to use the swastika. He actually hijacked it. There are imagery that are like swastikas on petroglyphs all over the world in India, China, here behind me from ancient Armenia. These petroglyphs depicting what appear to be swastikas are on these stones back here. Now the swastika is commonly thought, well, was believed to be a mystical good luck symbol. Also could be a symbol of the, of the sun. Also can be symbols referring to a, a storm or a thunder god. The ancient symbols of the swastika behind me. How did symbols like that end up in the Americas? I wonder. And then over here at Thunderbird, clearly, and a Thunderbird in, um, uh, in, so here's the, the bird, is like a pterodactyl type of creature. Right. And we still get reports from people all over the state that still see these things. Some of them even say their bellies glow at night. Hmm. Especially in the native communities. Oh yeah. The On native. Navajo Reservation out in the middle of nowhere areas. Do you think there might be a correlation between the pterodactyls, the bones for these flying reptiles that we find, and the thunderbirds that are depicted all over the place when you're talking about American Indians? I wonder if there is a correlation between the two. The, the thunderbird and, um, and even legends about the, you know, people will claim in Texas that they Occasionally see stuff like this. I, I have no idea. And often they'll say it has like a glowing belly, sort of like uh, fireflies do, and creatures like this. But anyhow, it's um, very similar to what you see and depicted in a lot of Indian art. Um, if we come over this way, I'm going to walk you over to a triceratops. So, um, Right here we've got a, a replica of a triceratops. Notice the size of these animals in the ancient world. And it was my friend Mark Armitage who did the, the microscope labs for, I think it might have been the University of California, but I'd have to be clear on that. But he went out to Hell's Creek, which is the same place that Jack Horner was kind of famous for finding some dinosaur soft tissue in a T-Rex. So actually his finds were, his finds had more soft tissue than Jack Horner's by a lot. Plumps full of soft tissue and an entire triceratops horn, literally full of bloody, meaty tissue. Here's Mark Armitage back here on the screen behind me. Here's images from his soft cell project. This actually is imagery that comes from the inside clumps of meat and juicy, bloody cells that came from a triceratops horn. Mark was, I used to talk to Mark all the time when he was going through his, his lawsuit. A lot of people think that the censorship going on is, is new. Mark Armitage is an example of the fact that it's been going on a long time in all sorts of different ways. Mark was fired for simply showing students that there was dinosaur, not just in a triceratops, he was finding it in all the different dinosaurs that he would, I mean, every time I would call him he had new dinosaur soft tissue. He called it the Dinosaur Soft Cells Project is what he called it and he was victorious in his, his lawsuit. They fought him tooth and nail. But they fired him for presenting, and he didn't even talk about the implications, the obvious implications, of course, that, well, meaty tissue is not going to last 65 million years. But he didn't even state that. He just stated, I keep finding it. And all the dinosaurs I look at, I keep finding cells and tissue and blood. And so they fired him, is what they did to Mark Armitage. 
and um, we've been driving quite a while. But these these creatures, these creatures, and I want to just walk you in the other room because we, we were looking at uh, dinosaur artifacts. Well, well, we were looking at Indian uh, petroglyphs the other day, and what you could see on the petroglyphs was that they were they were drawing large stuff like this even on the rocks out there uh, all over the place in truth in new mexico we just hiked to several different sites that were off of the beaten path and we were quickly finding all sorts of drawings that look like it just looks like stuff like this that was running loose and, and you find all these things underneath the ground out here and in new mexico and in dinosaur national monuments so it shouldn't come as surprising that you're you're finding squiggles on rocks that you know, d don't look like birds, but they look like um, they look like this animal up here, T-Rex. That kind of brings us around full circle to our final petroglyph, the T-Rex petroglyph. I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell. I want to give a very special thanks to Joshua James, who was knowledgeable and took us spent his time to take us to these sites also having he's the one that knows where the location of these petroglyphs are well what we know about the ancients was when they did petroglyphs they actually were drawing what they were seeing with their own eyes you know their imagination didn't just come up with all these things yeah this is this is a story that they're telling mm. of what happened and uh there's some more that way, but there's more this way. I want to thank you again for taking this, this journey with us to look at the dinosaur petroglyphs. In fact, this specific film you just watched is called the T-Rex petroglyphs, which would only be appropriate to look at our, to heavily look at our T-Rex petroglyph last in this film and do a thorough examination of it. If you enjoyed this particular film, there's far more films like this one over at GodInAnutshell.com and some of our films are some of our films are probably too edgy to actually upload to social media, but in any case, if you enjoyed this film, I think there are films over there that are equally as good, if not far better than the one that you just watched. Without further ado, I would like to draw your attention to this petroglyph right here and just lay in your hands for you to decide what it is that you're, you're looking at on this petroglyph we've got right here on the screen. It's got some kind of a character or stick figure of some type in its, in its mouth, but this figure that's on the screen right behind me so this is right here this is a okay this right here this is a petroglyph that you're looking at in in a canyon and there's a lot of petroglyphs here and uh the archaeological community or people that research these things your mainstream people will say that this is a this is a bird right here but you can see the arm on it and it's a little arm like you'd see on a t-rex and it's eating right here uh, what uh, what Joshua believes to be a, a person is what's being displayed in his in his mind but you can see the alarm and it's standing up and I'm going to put this particular petroglyph up on the screen behind me and I've got two different angles of it that I'm going to show to you as well as playing some footage of it so you can examine it yourself I'm not certain that I'm willing to commit with Joshua that it is a person in the creature's mouth but I'm going to give you two angles on that Joshua's arguments are going to be how often they draw stick figures and it's kind of got stickish lines coming off of it and hands grabbing it I'm not sure I can commit to that but I want to show you some at that's for you to decide but I want to show you some aspects of the elements of is it or is it not a is it some type of dinosaur or terrible lizard is what that word dinosaur actually means or specifically is this on the screen something like a t-rex that you're looking at here now i want to remind you 
This is our other dinosaur right here from another location in that canyon. I'm going to put this right here. This looks like, kind of looks like a raptor. He believes it looks more like a duckbill dinosaur, whichever one you like. But here's what a raptor looks like. Now to get to the raptor one, or what Joshua believes looks like a duckbill dinosaur one, this one is different than the T-Rex looking one. You've got to come up the canyon and there's this cave thing there that you enter that's clearly blackened on the ceiling. So fires have definitely been lit in this area where they were doing these petroglyphs many, many times over the course of time. And then you finally arrive at this, this petroglyph on the back screen that looks like, looks like a, a raptor or maybe a duckbill, looks like a dinosaur. Yeah. These are uh, Hedrosaurus. Oh my goodness! Look at these! Look at these! That's clearly a dinosaur. These are the duckbill dinosaurs. And as I bring it backwards, here's our raptor or duckbill dinosaur. It's got two little leggy guys there. You can see it's got the the raptor-like tail, a long neck, and it's got a tail sticking out the back. Kind of looks like a. Looks like a raptor back there on the screen. Let me get this out of the way so you can see him. But uh, the duck bill and the same thing up here. Now we're gonna move around the other side of the canyon where we have this one right here amongst a mingle of other petroglyphs. Now, those who have come out from the universities, and I'd like to notate that they're always going to fight you on what anything is that disagrees with their with their narrative they fired mark armitage they fought him legally I, he would call at night he was very upset on many calls about and about the words spoken to him and articles called he was called at first one of their top microscope uh, he put together the ivory tower of their microscope labs and then they were calling him a, a kook, a crazy person, just for suggesting that, just for actually just showing tissue he was finding in dinosaurs. I'm showing you imagery on the back screen here that, now notice they don't put it on the tour maps for you to go investigate yourself. It's not like there haven't been men from those universities out to come look at these and they'll claim that they are birds. If more of them had come out and looked at them, let me ask you another question. Would they still even be on those rocks or would they have already been scraped off? A bird has wings on its back. This character here does not have any wings. Just like a dinosaur doesn't have any, well, these don't have any wings. This creature here I'm comparing it to. It has a fat head on top and it's eating something. We have two legs, two little leggy guys coming from the bottom of him and a fat tail, not a thin bird tail, but a fat tail coming off of the back. And we'll take a closer look on the second image. Over here we also have an arm coming off of him and holding something that it's eating. Just like this creature here and the skeletons have arms that come off of them. There's an arm there. Let's take a look at the second image. Here it is. I'm gonna take you into this guy on this rock right here. We can see the two legs. We see the, the dinosaur fat, thick tail coming off of the back. And we get a closer look at this arm right here and something that it's eating in its mouth. Now, as pretty much everyone knows, birds don't have the dinosaur arms. They have wings. They don't have little arms in front like a, like a dinosaur does. This image on the screen back here, it specifically has little arms, just like a dinosaur has arms. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade in over myself right now the actual imagery that I shot of this petroglyph behind me. Now, as you're looking at the dinosaur petroglyph, I'm fading in over the petroglyph a graphic of a dinosaur. I just want you to take a look at how this graphic matches seemingly identically with the petroglyph that's on the screen and the dinosaur over it. It does look very strikingly like a, like a T-Rex right there, is what you may be looking at. 
you are now looking at a far closer image of the of the petroglyph that's there on the screen. I'm going to hold the dinosaur right up like this so that you can see the fat tail, the two legs, two legs on the bottom, and in the mouth up here you see something dangling down, which is debatable what it is, but it's holding something. You have little arms, there's the arms holding whatever that is, and the little mouth eating it, whatever it is it's eating. My opinion would simply be that you are staring at, on this image, exactly what it probably appears to be. That they saw a big lizard eating something, so they drew a big lizard holding and eating something. Maybe it was a person. I don't know. Lay that one in your hands. I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell. I want to thank you for watching this film, T-Rex Petroglyphs by the God in a Nutshell Project. I also want to thank you for supporting God in a Nutshell and watching other of our films which are available at GodinaNutshell.com. Again, I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell. God bless every last one of you. God bless every last one of you and your families on the other side of the screen. Is there someone in there? Are you... Hey, can you come look at this and see? I think there's... I think there's people still in here looking at the... trying to look at the film. C come here and... I, I think there's... I think there's someone in there and they're still... I think they're still... they're still watching the... Trying to, the films, if you're, if you're still looking through, uh, the, the, film's, the film's over. The film's over, you can go look at, look at something else now. The, the film is, hey, come look at this and see if there's, are there still people in there? I think there's still people in there trying to watch. I nearly forgot, most important thing of the whole video. I've got my dinosaur goo right here in my hand and we're going to, I haven't opened this yet, so we're going to, we're going to check this out together. The, the goo, and I got alien goo from Roswell that will be in one of the next films coming out. Here's, here's the goo, the dinosaur goo, and it's got a little dinosaur guy in there. If we can get him out and we'll see what he looks like. I'll kind of pull the goo. Most of your fossil record is not dinosaurs. It's it's sea life, and that's all over the surface of the Earth. Most of your fossil record, your the the strata underneath the ground, is made of sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock means rock laid down by water, and it's sorted under there by weights and densities. And the creatures caught inside those layers of strata are sorted in there by ecological systems. But most of it is sea life, seashells, clams, planktons, plants, algaes. If one were looking at the fossil record honestly, it would appear as one enormous marine catastrophe all across the entire face of the whole Earth. Is actually stickier goo than on the on the alien goo that was in the test tube that you'll see in the next film. But there is our dinosaur guy. I don't know if you see him trapped in there inside the goo. So you'll you'll notice that the 
you'll notice that the alien characters in all of their depictions and here's a good looking alien guy right here and he's he's pointing up so he's pointing up so you're dealing with principalities and powers and where are they at are they up there in the high places I have a very strong feeling that you'll probably really enjoy our Roswell film. Here's the sign at the entrance of Roswell. It's even got a cow being abducted by a UFO on top of it. Now, if you zoom into this on his hand, you get this right here. Now, if you take this document and you put it together, as I've got down here on this page, so this would be a zoom in of the text that you're looking at from this section of the page he's holding as a scene right here and let me read it to you this is what it would read in his hand and the victims of the wreck in the disc you can see the word disc right there even with the quotations they will ship and the victims of the wreck in the disc they will ship this is what's in the hand of the man that would change the story from a flying disc to a weather balloon. The next films that we have are going to look at the, we're going to leave the world of dinosaurs and we're going to head over and we're going to look at, we're going to look at UFOs in Roswell. And notice how the, the alien characters, wherever you see them depicted, they're kind of a, they're kind of a serpentine or they're kind of a they kind of got a serpentine appearance to them or an amphibious appearance to them or a, a lizard like a reptile seeming appearance to even all of the displays of these, the, these characters. Ancient of Days, Christian Synopsium on Aliens. Thank you for being here because that really does happen in the name of Jesus, the aliens. So if aliens are pestering you, they'll go away. Presenting a thorough biblical response to the UFO and alien phenomenon by many of the most noted Christian ap academics and what that means academics and this included at the time before he passed away Mike Heiser would come to many of these events and um, And I knew Mike Heiser incredible man Academics and ministers and research in this field Again, I tell you the same people that talk through Ouija boards are the same people that talk through UFOs. I'm gonna get this book from you, my friend. Yeah, can I show you? You mentioned Joe Jordan. Is that his book? There. Yeah. All right. Book. I'm hoping it's not 50 more dollars, but it probably is. In it. Oh wow! I'm taking it from you. And right here, look at that on the cover of the book. I just like to show you the cover of that book in the heart of um, Roswell. So there's the alien. There's the alien right there, and he's coming through, and he's got an apple, just like the serpent or the nakash in the garden. All right. So, so in this. In this box right here, in this box right here, he has the alien poo. This is the Ancient of Days gift shop. We're going to throw this away, by the way. And inside the box, there it is, right there. Mexican the selenite. And, and it's glowing right now, even though you can't see it, because the UV rays are being blocked out by the white light. We're also going to, we're going to explore some kind of fun things. This is a very heavy time in the history of the world. We're going to look at, we're going to look at Tesla. We've got a guy named Elon Musk that's doing a lot of interesting things. And he seems to like the name Tesla. So I thought we should take a look at Tesla. But that there probably actually are things that are, that are known. There probably actually are things that are, that are known that uh, some of which took place in this state. This is an interesting state for that to occur in. Things like, like demons are told to you in your Bible to be territorial. Territorial, they have territories. But it would be my strong opinion that there probably are things that are not told to you that are supernatural and sciency seeming. We're gonna take a look at some of our weapons from the past. Here's my Oppenheimer in my hand right here. And just do some, his head fell off. And just do some interesting, some interesting talks on these things. I'll get the head in a minute. And also talk about this guy here. Does the little guy that I've got stuck inside this goo look similar to that petroglyph on the screen back there? 
I lay that in your hands. My opinion is sometimes the simple answer is the correct one, that they were in fact drawing dinosaurs on rocks in New Mexico. It's in this little package. It's called a Trump Squish. And he is a being squished in all of your news medias. But he always seems to have, I mean, the term trump card actually comes from this guy here that keeps getting squished. But I'm doubtful he'll be squished in the end. I'm Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell, and uh, this is the end of the film. God bless each and every last one of you and your families on the other side of the screen. God bless all of you and your families on the other side of this screen, and even Donald Trump.